How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Thursday here on the program. You know what that means? We've got a lot to get into today. Last night, AW Dynamite. Holy smokes, was there some great wrestling on that show. If you're a fan of wrestling and violence, I got the show for you. We'll talk about that here today. Full review of Dynamite. More tonight on the Brian and Vinny Show. Only for subscribers. WrestlingObserver.com. Video.F4WOnline.com. Sometimes I review the shows here on this show or elsewhere. Oh, I can't believe they didn't talk about... I got a limited amount of time on national radio. But tonight on the podcast, we do not have limited time. So uh, much more detail, obviously, on the Brian and Vinny Show. But I will go over all of the main stories on the program here today. We've also got the NXT ratings from this past Tuesday night. NXT did not do as well as Raw did. Raw had a huge number for their go-home show. NXT did uh, what it normally does. We'll tell you about that. And also, we have the full lineup for the Stand and Deliver show. The full lineup for Night 1 and Night 2 of WrestleMania. And obviously, there's a big smackdown tomorrow night with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And this poor geek Ricochet will be facing Umberto and Angel in a match he asked for. A three-way facing an established tag team. That's coming up tomorrow. We've also got notes on Nick Khan. He talked a lot about WWE, and uh, of course, it's... uh, you know, it's Nick Khan talking about WWE, so we can tell you about that. Got a new uh, WWE uh, scripted series that's coming out. And uh, what an irony. What an irony. We'll tell you about that later on. And uh, so much more. Mike Zipper, VV joins us after the break. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. So we had some uh, some bloke. He's actually, I don't know, it's hard to tell with these, uh, these Twitch geeks, whether they're, they're trolls or, uh, or geeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it, whether they're being ignorant to, to be ignorant or whether they're ignorant in Well, the some people just say sense. such stupid things that it's like, they can't possibly be serious. But then there's such a consistency to their stupidity that then you start thinking, is he actually this dumb? So anyway, one of these guys goes, aren't there 80,000 tickets out both nights for WrestleMania? 80,000? Say what now? Bruh, here's the numbers for WrestleMania right now. Night one. Night one. And by the way, uh, do I need to throw out that my original prediction for WrestleMania was uh, 55,000 both nights? Do I need to remind everybody of that? Yes. Okay. Well, night one. Being uh, you? Yeah, you do. Night one is at uh, 58,114. And uh, night two is at 57,088. So you're wrong, basically. No, I'm actually dead on because... No, you're uh, you're not. You're wrong. Don't get into this semantics, You're generally correct. Everybody was talking about how this... Well, I shouldn't say everybody, but uh, people were very confident that this was going to do 80,000 both nights. And I said, brother, it ain't going to do 80,000 both nights because I ain't the only one who's not well. flying down there because I'm not doing two nights in a row. And uh, here we are, 58,000 for night one and uh, 57,000 for night two. Now, as I said at the beginning, yes, if you're running a business, then uh, should we do some math here? I'll have to use a calculator because I'm not very good Go at ahead. it. 58,000 plus uh, 57,000. Uh, they've sold 115,000 tickets. So, in fact, uh, this is the most tickets ever sold, ever, for WrestleMania. So, yeah, if you want to look at it from that perspective, that's great. But what they have also done is, it is true, unless you are one of those people that uh, you can't possibly believe, that there's 58 or whatever thousand the first night, and a completely different 57,000 on night two, and nobody is going to both shows. I think we all know deep down... That what has actually happened here is, as opposed to having 80 to 85,000 people flying in for WrestleMania, now we've got 55,000 people flying in for WrestleMania. So you've actually, you've actually, what you've done here is, in terms of like people that are interested in going and traveling to Mania, there's actually less here than there's been in forever, but you have successfully sold more tickets than you've ever sold. 
because the fewer number of people that want to go are buying tickets for two nights. That's what's happened here. So from a business perspective, you can look at this however you want. Obviously, the way WWE is looking at it is the short term. We sold 115,000 tickets. Way to go. We've broken all of our records. We can tout it on social media. It's the most attended WrestleMania or however they're going to put it or whatever. And, of course, you know they'll, they'll inflate that to 130,000 tickets sold. But the fact of the matter is, this is the short-term thinking. The long-term thinking would be, we really want to move from 80,000 people willing to travel to 55. Ah, whatever. That's where we're at. I... You're you're right, but you're right and you're wrong. I think there there's <laughs> no actually I'm right and I'm right. Whichever one you think is is uh, the way to look at it is is your right or wrong. But they're both they're both true. There's less people going, but they made more money and sold more tickets. But so it's up to you to also, decide but, which is but better. But they've been looking at this. But you say it's short term. They have been looking at this for a long time, and they did jump ahead of everybody by going to two nights and you can debate that as a fan and as a viewer whether it is a good production whether it gives you your time's worth all that sort of stuff but the flip side of that is it's a lot easier to contract it to this point than it is to expand and we'll find out with los angeles next year being a really good example of that with having the rock there you only need to have it okay if that happens the rock and roman reigns you only really need to have one night and to me you would want to maximize that but they probably won't they're going to go with multiple nights because this is what their plan has been and it is not it is not solely wwe that's done this we brought it up many times this is the way a lot of these events have this is the way that they've gone and they want to dominate every night so so you're right it has shrunk but the, the fact is that number was probably going to shrink and contract a little bit anyway so now you have given the people if you look at this from a marketing point of view the ability to show up any night and see wrestlemania and the ability to show up any day and see multiple wwe things happening so it's a catch. It's again. I see how they want to extract as much money as possible out of the most amount of people, and that's what they're doing right now. And it's a lot easier for them to shrink this back to one night if they want to, as opposed to running to you know two nights. Look, they they could lose their minds and go three nights at some point if they think it's going to make business and financial sense. And God knows, maybe they will because. They still have about 60,000 people that have flooded that area for WrestleMania, and that's what they're there for. So, I don't know. Well, all I know is they, uh, they got 57 and 58, and uh, next year, I mean, I don't think they're going to have Stone Cold Steve Austin. I still don't think they're going to have The Rock. So, what are we going to have next year? Johnny Knoxville comes back. What else? I mean, look at these cards, and uh, what do they do to get these uh, 57 and 58? We got uh, Becky and Bianca. So I'm sure next year uh, their big match is going to be Becky and Ronda. They're hoping that's going to be a big one. We've got uh, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, and obviously next year they want Roman Reigns and uh, The Rock, which uh, I don't think is going to happen, but they think it's going to happen. So, uh, you know, what else do we got next year? We got Omos, the giant Omos. The undefeated Omos he against somebody. Omos and Brock Lesnar. Is that going to be their big match next year? Uh, oh, Edge has already come back. You know, we've got uh, Pat McAfee. Maybe he can come Cody. out of the booth again. Yeah, we got we got Cody, who they're not even announcing. And that's on night one. But uh, anyway, here are the lineups. Night one, Becky and Bianca. Ray and Dominic versus Miz and Logan Paul. Drew McIntyre and Happy Corbin. Usos versus Nakamura and Boogs. New Day versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Seth Rollins versus Cody. And Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. And apparently, as always, as always, the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing. Kevin Owens and Ronda Rousey both believe they are the main event of WrestleMania. So we'll see what happens on uh, Saturday night. Sunday, we got well, Zelina. they have multiple main events, don't they? I heard this story with Ronda being told she was in the main event. I mean, don't they don't they look at their shows as having like three main events on each? Well, night? you know, I I think if they if if they consider Ronda Rousey like the Kiss Demon who signed a contract that he would always be in the main event, <laughs> exactly. So they put him on second and said they called it a main event even though it was on second on the card. Yeah, you could do that if you wanted to. 
but I'm pretty sure that Kevin Owens and Ronda Rousey both believe that they are going on last. Well, I think you tell Ronda Rousey anything, and then she can get angry about it later on down the line. But yeah, closing the show, if it's not Steve Austin in Texas, I mean, it's, well, dumb. We have got uh, Zelina Carmella versus Sasha and Naomi versus Rhea and Liv versus Natty and Shayna. This is night two. Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn, anything goes. Pat McAfee, Austin Theory. By the way, no Vince. So unless they do something on uh, Friday, which they could do because uh, Pat McAfee is, of course, the commentator there. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. But he was always supposed to be there, so we shall see. RK Bro, Street Profits, Alpha Academy, Triple Threat for the tag titles. Edge and AJ, Bobby Lashley and Omos, and Lesnar and Roman Reigns for the Universal title. So that is the, that's the lineup. I hope Shane McMahon's music hits first when Seth goes out there. I really do. <laughs> I hope he comes dancing out there. <laughs> and then everybody loses their mind. And then Cody comes out and then hits him with a sledgehammer or whatever it is Cody's going to do. <laughs> we also have uh, the NXT show pre-show, Toxic Attraction versus Raquel and Dakota. Carmelo, Santos Escobar, Solo Sokoa, Grayson Waller, Cameron Grimes for the North American title in a ladder match. Tommaso Ciampa and Tony D'Angelo in Ciampa's last match. Mandy Rose, Cora Jade, Io Shirai, Kaylee Ray Fourway for the women's title. Imperium versus Creeds versus MSK for the tag titles. LA Knight versus Gunter. And Dolph Ziggler versus Braun Breaker. It's NXT at 9 a.m. Pacific. Have fun, everybody. Back in a moment, Observer Live. NXT Tuesday, 626,000 viewers, down slightly from last week. Still the best audience for the show since January 11. It was a build to stand and deliver 0.14 in 1849, which is uh, about what it's been doing. That's that's uh, good, by the way, for NXT. Uh, as compared to 2021, down 4.3% in overall viewers, down 33% at 1849. I think we're comparing a year-to-year -year where they were going head-to-head -head with Dynamite. They're doing worse. Remember when they got rid of Hunter? Remember that? I do. Remember they got rid of that guy, and they rebranded it, and they made it all colorful? Yeah. And they the came kids. up with a bunch of stupid gimmicks and everything like that? Uh-huh. And now it's doing much worse? Well. Mm, that's weird. <laughs> and it's not even head-to-head -head anymore. Think about that. You think it's got a better theme, though, with Wale, or... Mm. No. Well, it's better than Wild and Young. Value? Tell you that much. <laughs> that's, well, yeah, that's true. During a podcast appearance, Nick Khan was asked about and addressed complaints from wrestlers that have left the con company, citing negative experiences and preferential treatment. Speaking on the town podcast, Khan said, Everyone is treated humanely. Well, that's good. Because, <laughs> you know, I was. Uh, <laughs> I don't like to hear about places that pe treat people inhumanely. <laughs> yeah. But that's what he said. This, these oh, are my God. These are exact quotes. Everyone <laughs> is treated humanely. Humanely. And he adds, they deserve to be treated that way. Uh, we don't stick them in the bell tower anymore. <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to get really mad at me for this, but I'm actually reading. These are the words that Nick Khan said. So, like, I don't know why you would get mad at me, but let me read that again. Nick Khan's responses to wrestlers who say that, that Soylent Green is people. He said, <laughs> he said, this is a direct quote, everyone is treated humanely <laughs> and deserves to be treated that way. Oh, no, God. And, you know, I, I hope they, they they actually turn that back and they, they really start wrestler, treating wrestlers inhumanely so Sarah McLaughlin can have a song and we can have a slow montage of, of sad WWE faces like Ricochet getting beat up in 105 seconds and just a whole line of those things. Just the hell with it. Humanely. Well, may I continue? Humanely. Sure. <laughs> He compared their situation to when the NBA's L.A. Lakers had superstars Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal at the same time, noting that they weren't treated the same as some of their other teammates. Was Shaq treated better than any other player other than Kobe? Said Nick Khan. Yeah, that's the way it is. 
He then brought up Will Smith was not removed from the Oscars following his slap of Chris Rock, partially because he was a major star. Well, that's a very complicated story. Because, according to the Academy, they, they asked him to leave and he refused. So they oh. didn't make him. Then, of course, there are others that say they actually never asked him to leave, officially. Yes, that's... Uh... You unofficially asked him to leave? Listen, in an unofficial capacity, could you leave after slapping that guy? No? All right. Well, anyway, we got a, a Best uh, Actor Award for you, so stick around. Well, anyway... Didn't he co-produce the show, too? It said, uh, he says here, uh, was Shaq treated... Oh, yeah, I already heard that. It's the yeah. same with us. It is a meritocracy. If you're at the top of the card, maybe you have a bigger dressing room than someone at the bottom of the card. Everyone has the same opportunity to earn their way there, he said. <laughs> he also said the company is open for business when asked about a potential sale. It's not like I've been saying that for like a year and everybody thought I was an idiot. Oh, no, They're open stop. for business. Everybody's been saying that old They're stuff. They're open for business. Everybody's been saying it. Come on. He says you know they're that. a treasure trove of IP. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, well they that's, are. Uh, that's true. That is true. There's some speak there. He said the Vince McMahon Netflix docuseries is set to debut in 2023. WWE is for the masses, he said, and the company can never <laughs> lose sight of that. Wu-Tang for he the said, children. He said this publicly. The average viewer is someone that grew up in the 80s or 90s and went to public school because of the availability or lack thereof of cable in many Yo. parts of the country. <laughs> what? What does that mean? Khan talked about how he came to WWE. Which is that from... him, his way to, nice way to say demographic is they're old and broke, which used to be the whole stereotype of wrestling fans as they were well, they he may not necessarily... have been old, but Hold they were on. broke. He's not necessarily saying they're broke today. They were broke then. <laughs> Simple ass public Weren't we school all... kids. Didn't we all grow up broke? Nick Khan? Yeah, you, you I know Vince the... did. You didn't have the finger he toe grew shoes up back poorer then. None. Than, he was he was poorer than dirt, <laughs> which is very poor. Although dirt is rich in nutrients, now that I think about it. But anyway, that's a, that's a story here. Listen, I'm sure this is. I'm sure he's a great guy. I actually have nothing against Nick Khan, but you know what this is? This company is being permeated with people that know nothing about wrestling. That's what we've got here, and and maybe you know maybe we're gonna find out. Let's be honest here. Maybe we're going to find out, because historically this has certainly been the case, that you don't need to know anything about wrestling to run a wrestling company. We might find that out. Maybe times have changed. Because it's always worked out really, really well, right? Yes. Yes. Um, we're you going... know, one thing he'll, he's, he said that was absolutely right, that I don't know if anybody wants to flex about, and I'm sure somebody's in their feelings about it, is the whole thing of the meritocracy. and all. That's all true. That's all fine. That's all fair. And to have a bunch of stars, you know, you want to pack your team with stars at the expense of maybe, you know, the other role players on the team don't get to shine. You know, that that's all fair. The, the whole thing is the opportunity to succeed because in sports, if somebody started to outshoot Kobe and somebody started to run up and down the floor, look, the, the Showtime Lakers are a good example of this and the whole deal on HBO right now, the winning time uh documentary that's do documentary whatever the hell you want to call it the movie that the miniseries that's taking place where norm nixon was an all-star guard for the lakers but then magic got there and then it wasn't really long after that that norm nixon was gone but they put him in the same backcourt they wanted him to see who's going to be that guy who's going to be there with kareem you know who would be Shaq in that equation and they let them, they really did give them an opportunity to go out there and win the job. And that's what WWE doesn't do. And that's where all that BS that he talks about, all that business stuff is it's business. Makes perfect sense. Even to a wrestling fan, if it doesn't tickle your wrestling sense, a lot of what Nick Khan does, and as far as if you're looking at this from a WWE point of view, a lot of what Nick Khan says makes a lot of sense. Hey, do but you there know? There is pissing on you and and thinking that it's raining because the people on the outside don't see why that's all BS and what he said. And look at the show from an, an an ignorant point of view, a fair you know just an ignorant and not knowing point of view, and and believe what he's saying. And that's the thing that we all know is a, is a crock of crap and the thing that really hurts them. Do you know that they uh, they let Tony Storm go? Walk and away. Brian Danielson and John yeah. Moxley. Yeah. Keith Lee. What? 
keep going. You want me to go on? But you know what I could not help but notice? What? Well, yesterday we read an article where uh, the the one guy whose name I've forgotten, God bless that him. dude. Sure, he's a nice guy as well. Bruh. About how, you know, we don't need any wrestlers. We need, uh, we need to get these young athletes straight out of college on our NIL deals because, uh, you know, this business is easy. We can teach it to anybody. You just true. have to be able to do a flip. We can teach you how to be a great worker. So anyway... I, I can't help but notice I read that article yesterday, and then I read this article today. Uh-huh. WWE is producing a new scripted series based on a fictional pro wrestling promotion for NBC Universal. It was announced today WWE and Universal Content Productions have partnered together for a drama series called Pinned. <laughs> Here is the description of the show. An adrenalized... I'm going to try and read this because this is a lot of words. An adrenalized upstairs, downstairs soap that gives a behind-the-scenes look at a oh, fictional wh- wrestling promotion. Time out. Hold time on. Out, no, let me out. finish no, this. No. I, I got to mute you. I can't do this twice. An adrenalized upstairs, downstairs soap that gives a behind-the-scenes look at a fictional wrestling promotion and the unforgettable characters that populate it. Pinned offers a front row seat into the eccentric wrestling culture and the mayhem that exists between the locker room and the boardroom. God, that was excruciating. Go ahead. Upstairs, Downstairs was a show from the 70s. The 70s that was played on PBS. Well, they didn't capitalize Upstairs, Downstairs, so that's a term, Mike. Okay, I thought. Yes. Look, with with the the way that they to this day reference things from the '80s to their fans, as if their fans, most of them, have any idea of what the hell they're talking about, is something. So I thought that was right in line with with some of their thinking. But I mean, are you surprised? Talk about controlling your narrative actually yeah i'm very surprised that they're Why? doing a, For WWE, a scripted is, series about pro wrestling dude right up their alley this is where they're at in this day and age and you know what they'll be able to say brian too when everybody comes to the production and they roll the show out and everything and heaven forbid god knows if it's successful and lasts more than one season let alone like you know three episodes before it gets canceled the crazy part about this is the fact that they will now take this and look and go, this is what wrestling, this is the fake wrestling, this is what we do for real. Where all these other people in independent wrestling, the way that people actually come up and become professional wrestlers, they are going to further teach the public that, no, all you need to do is go to college, be somewhat of an athlete, we'll give you an NIL deal, and then that's how you get into wrestling. It's such a great bastardization and another controlling all right. how they do things. To the break, Observer Live. Um, I know it was killing you that last segment there, but bottom line, you know when WWE used to say they took everything out of the smoke-filled buildings and all that stuff, and it was all BS? It's what they're going to do with this show, even if it's mildly successful, much like Tough Enough, where they just, this is just another marketing campaign and how they position themselves and continue to look at things, and wrestling fans are going to hate it, but I'm not surprised about it at all. Not not at all, bro. and... The more I don't know why you're so surprised about this. Really, Vince is own look. He is again anything that he used to do. All that stuff's gone now. Why I am mean, I surprised? Yeah, because you know I got a great idea for a scripted program involving professional wrestling. It's actually mm-hmm. two programs. It's called Raw and SmackDown. Oh, stop! I know all look, this guy does is talk stuff, about but... how we ain't pro wrestling. We don't do pro wrestling. We don't want pro wrestlers. We don't want. Now he's gonna do a show about pro wrestling. Well, I got a pro wrestling show for you. He's doing a parody of pro wrestling now, and that's not gonna stop. Like you wanting him to make Raw and SmackDown and make it. Those shows are what they are, and this is the vision that they've had for them, and this is the way it's continued to go. Whether everybody else is kicking or screaming, or whether we talk about it every day on the show or not, that's what they're going to do. 
So it doesn't surprise me with some of the other moves that they've made outside of the wrestling, outside of what they should be looking at. It was the in-ring product and those shows solely. And I see what they've done and some of the other ventures they've gotten into and how they play wrestling, how they play their product in other places. And I'm not surprised about this at all. Why Why should you be? I really don't, well, I don't I'll know. I'll explain it one more time. Then I'm going to talk about Dynamite. Because the guy's done everything in his power to distance himself from pro wrestling. The, literally, the only thing he has not done is take the word wrestle out of WrestleMania. And yeah. now he's going to do a scripted program if about he's pimped, pro wrestling. Brian, if yes, he's I find everything that else, very ironic. Why, why would he not whore this? If why he's are you yelling at me? You product. asked me why I thought it was weird. I told you. Because it's like if he's pimped out the product for everything else, you say he's tried to distance himself and he's used it to wave it around. Why are you surprised? Yeah, he's doing so do it a cop either? show or something. Do a show about uh, I don't know bodybuilding, bodybuilding, we tried that whatever. We did that one. But bro, if you want to do something about pro wrestling, then how about you do a pro wrestling show that I have to watch every week? Because I'm sick of do this. You're acting like you gotta you gotta watch this new show. Or I'm not gonna you? watch this new show. Are you kidding me? But I'll uh, tell you what I did watch, because I got to do this Dynamite report. What if they call it New Show 2.0? Then all of a sudden you'll want to see it again. How much caffeine did you have today, brother? A lot? <laughs> I did you go back to get another MRI and they shot you up with some fentanyl or something? That's... <laughs> now, can we do this Dynamite <laughs> report? That's why you can't dive, dab on the molly anymore because of that. It's this terrible, show was it? full of excellent wrestling matches. CM Punk and Max Caster. Very good match. Although, on this show, it was kind of low on the very good match scale because there were so many other great matches. But they had a good match. They gave Max Caster a lot. CM Punk sold. Got him with the Anaconda device. Submitted him. And then Tony Schiavone gets in the ring for the WWE promo. What did that mean when you went like this last week? Punk goes, we're not idiots. I want the championship. And I don't know who's going to be the champion, but whoever it is, I want a shot. And before my time here is over, I will be the champion. So he's next in line. We had a segment with MJF and uh, FTR. They are clearly on their way to a breakup, but they, they didn't do this week. Nothing nothing is rushed in this promotion, I've noticed. Including the Jay Lethal heel turn. Jay Lethal, John Moxley. Lethal's all upset that he's been losing the big ones. They have a really, really good match. John Moxley ends up pinning him with the Paradigm Shift DDT. Jay Lethal is so disgusted in himself that when John Moxley offers a handshake, he almost doesn't give it to him. But he does, and then hangs his head in shame and walks out. We had a Marina Shafir video package. They're uh, debuting her here on the main roster soon. FTR versus the Gun Club. Match was uh, it was pretty good. FTR is excellent. Gun Club, and it can be carried to a good match. Billy tried to get involved. Um, in the middle of the match, Wardlow showed up, starts beating up security guys, runs through about two dozen security guys before they finally stop him from getting to MJF. MJF is screaming at him on commentary. There's a big kerfluffle. FTR wins with the big rig. MJF comes to celebrate, and FTR is furious at him. Dude, why do you have to do this to our friend? They like Wardlow. They were buddies. So they're furious, and finally cooler heads prevail. MJF raises their hands. But uh, I don't know if there's going to be a big rig in MGF's future. Maybe they won't give us that one. But uh, this this crew is not long for the world. We had Jericho Appreciation Society. They were making fun of the fact that Ortiz, Santana, and Eddie Kingston were gone for good. And, of course, there they are behind a curtain. And we have a gigantic brawl. And at first, uh, the three of them beat the hell out of the Jericho Appreciation Society. But then, finally, old Jake Hager shows up. He runs roughshod. They grab the bat. They absolutely beat the hell out of these guys. And so once again, Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz are left laying. We had Jade Cargill and Mark Sterling backstage. They ask, who's going to be number 30? Mark Sterling says, it's going to be the librarian, Leva Bates. Even Jade Cargill cannot stand for this. She says, get the hell out of here. Who's number 30 really going to be? And Mark Sterling sheepishly responds, and Maria Shafir. He's not confident. But Jade's confident. She says, get her out of here. So that's going to be apparently number 30. Jade Cargill and Marina Shafir. All right. Brian Danielson and Wheeler Yuta was the most glorious violence I've seen in quite some time. <laughs> Golly. Brian Danielson. 
I think he saw what Wheeler Uta was wearing for tights, and he was like, this guy's going to suffer. And, boy, he beat the absolute piss out of this poor guy. He pummeled him. He smashed him. Then Wheeler Uta makes a comeback, and the place goes absolutely nuts for Wheeler Uta's comeback. Danielson cuts him off again. He goes to stomp his head in. Wheeler spits the most disgusting. Like, even Bret Hart was envious of this loogie that got spit on Brian Danielson. It's just all down his face. And Danielson, covered in drool, just stomps the hell out of this guy. Puts him in the uh, yes lock. Pulls out his nostrils and submits him. Golly, this guy deserves to be in the Blackpool Combat Club for this beating. We have the Indisputed Championship Celebration, even though they're not champions. They do their celebration. Out comes, uh, uh, first we had, who came out first? Hangman. And then uh, he runs wild on all three guys, but then they overwhelm him. Then we have, uh, re- uh, let's see, Luchasaurus and Christian Cage come out, and uh, they beat up the heels. And at the end of the day, the baby faces get all of their belts back. So we're undoubtedly doing... Another Adam Cole versus Hangman Page match. And Red Dragon uh, will be getting the shot against uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, which I suspect probably is going to end up being a title change, but I guess we'll see. We got that Thunder Rose interview everybody was waiting for last week. Remember you guys were all angry? She didn't get a chance to talk? You happy now? She says she's going to be the uh, foundation of this company. (laughs) What? In... uh... Thought it was underwhelming a little bit. I wouldn't say it was underwhelming, but I mean, everybody was so angry she didn't get a chance to talk, and then she just did a generic promo, said she was going to be the champion, and then said she was the first ever Mexican-born champion, which, of course, is ridiculous, but I think this is like one of those WWE deals where, like, Charlotte was undefeated on pay-per-view, even though she lost 85 times on TV. Thunder Rosa is the first woman in a major United States wrestling promotion who yes. is a Mexican-born woman who has yes. won a women's title. Do you believe that it may be less of a case of a WWE-speak sort of thing and she just like kind of jumbled her words and misspoke? Well, I'm sure she jumbled her words and misspoke, <laughs> but that's, that's, what, that's what she is here, so for those of you wondering. Oh, and by the way, just, just to shoehorn this in here because I thought it was kind of random. All Japan Women, the uh, classic uh, women's promotion, speaking of women's wrestling, uh, IWTV has picked up the entire back catalog of that, and they're going to be airing it. And So if you like women's wrestling, All Japan Women's, what Dave talks about and goes on rants about on these shows that with Brian, you'll get a chance to see some of that stuff now. Then we had uh, the debut of Tony Storm in a Owen Hart Foundation Tournament qualifier. And uh, this place absolutely lost it for Tony Storm. And then they did not care one bit about her match with the Bunny because I think they'd seen a lot of great matches and they had zero. They had, there wasn't one person. If the Bunny's family were there, they didn't think she was going to win. So they just uh, watched them do their match and then cheered when she won. And uh, she cried because she couldn't believe what a reaction she got after they didn't do anything with her in WWE. A broken record. You said it right with Dave last night. They were just waiting for her to win. It really wasn't a referendum on the match. They just they popped for Tony Storm. They wanted to pop for her again in victory. Then we had Andrade versus Darby Allen. This was this was in some ways perhaps more violent than that Brian Danielson Wheeler Uta match. <laughs> Andrade is now legitimately about 255 like pounds violent at the buffet this guy is enormous and darby is uh <laughs> he's, probably he's shoot my size eating like he's got that kind of money and he does and Jesus. they uh, had a fight and andrade destroyed him and darby made these striking comebacks they had a striking battle with all these slaps i hate these slaps but they did it and then uh, finally at the end we had uh jose tried to interfere no respect this Jose gets, by the way. Not that he deserves a lot, necessarily, but well. he don't get none. They had the graphic for this match, and it says, Darby Allen with Sting versus Andrade with Jose. And they announced, coming up next, Darby versus Andrade. And the answers go, and Sting's going to be there. <laughs> now, what about Jose? He's going to be there. You guys don't care about Jose? Well, anyway, Jose. No way to Jose. Is that what they're saying? Jose tried to interfere. Sting beat him up. Then Butcher and Blade attacked Sting. Darby laid them out with a dive. But of course, 
And getting back into the ring, he was killed, DDT'd, and pinned by Andrade. And then we had the big smashmas with uh, the Andrade, uh, which, by the way, here in that front page report, it says A-H. There's no H in this AFO anymore. It's AFO now. Hardy's gone. They uh, beat up Darby and Sting. Private Party starts to run down the ramp, and everyone initially cheers because they're like, oh, they're coming to... Oh, wait a second. They're bad guys. And so they join in the fight. And then they hit uh, the Hardy's music, and then the place goes nuts again. Jeff Hardy and Matt come down. Twist of fate, senton. They just killed poor Mark Quinn with the senton. He's dead. And the show went off the air with happy ending. I like this show a lot. I had so much fun watching this show. Am I the only one? No, it was a good show. It was a really good show. And good. the fact that when you have long, good matches like that, and they weren't like, you Checked know, in clear, so I got to make sure. <laughs> they weren't obscenely long or anything like that, but it makes the other stuff that you do on the show stand out more. The other segments stand out more. And, you know, it was just a really, it was just a really, really solid show. And how can you go wrong? I mean, John Moxley and Jay Lethal, I don't know if Lethal is going heel. I guess it depends on what they decide to do with Ring of Honor, because... Him saying, man, I got to get my mojo back, you know, where, you know, and then he goes again, uh, that could play into some of this stuff too, but CM Punk, probably a good idea every single week, Darby Allen, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, find a way to start the show with those guys, because it really does make a difference in my opinion, as far as the energy of the show goes. Somebody's asking about Jeff Senton. Listen, I don't know anything about what's going on with Jeff Hardy and everything like that, but he's been he's... doing this forever, and uh, he's probably got some uh, some injuries. And if you guys recall, uh, Randy Savage used to do that flying elbow, and he wouldn't touch you until he started hurting really bad, and then he landed on you with all of his might because he didn't want to land on the mat. So, uh, you know, you do a, a senton bomb, you're young, and uh, 99% of you hits the mat. You get old, 100% of you hits the guy. Back in a moment, we're live. <laughs> yeah, so uh, two weeks ago when he killed Isaiah Cassidy, I think it was, with a swanton, I made a tweet and, and said that Jeff Hardy kind of hit swanton bombs like a 40-pound bag of fertilizer falling off the top shelf at Home Depot. And seriously, watch some of his in slow motion, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And people responded that he was on the Edge and Christian pod of awesomeness and said he used to have a nice soft swanton, but sometime in 2018 or so, after hurting his shoulder, Jeff said, quote, I had to start thinking about me, and now he kills people with him. He he calls it a crouton bomb, I guess, because of the way he makes people crumble with it. And I guess one of the lines he had was, I'm going to protect myself and you. Basically, you'll survive. <laughs> Just maybe with broken ribs and a sternum. Holy smokes. Well, there you go. Just Don't as I thought. <laughs> as a man who used no. to do the senton bomb all the time. Whew, that tailbone is, I guess, uh, bad shape. Well, I was a, I was a, uh, a gymnast, and so actually... The way I did it was a giant dive roll. So I would go up high in the air, and then I would I would basically roll out so the my head hit the butt. So they didn't feel a thing. And I didn't feel a thing any, either because I rolled. But the way he did it was you go up, and you just bash your whole body on the ground. <laughs> no good. Oh, man. have you Were you ever able to get in the ring? Did you ever do the deal where, like, Humberto does, where he kind of, like, slides through the first and second rope and does the headstand and never touches the ropes? Can you do that? Slide in through the – do a yeah. headstand? I'll send you the I I'll need a video. video. I didn't do anything complicated. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, we're out of time. Get those wrestling WrestleMania cameos in, everybody. Now's your chance. I know you got buddies at your WrestleMania party. Oh, they'd pop if they got a cameo from me. F4W Online. Cameo. Birthdays. Whatever. And all the news of the weekend on the site, WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, yeah. We got a site, too, WrestlingObserver.com. Anyway, I got to go. Wrestling Observer Live.